here is this is um, an organic fresh turkey that I bought at my local grocer uh, it was very expensive it is 12 and a half pounds and uh, usually when I make a turkey I make a very large turkey I usually don't cook a turkey that's under 22 pounds but because it's just for us and then I'll have a carcass to make some soup and we'll have some leftovers this is what we're going to go with today um, additionally what we're going to use in the turkey some celery some garlic I've just cut the tops off of onion I didn't even peel it some baby carrots that I had in the drawer if you have whole carrots go for it these need to be used and we're not going to really eat them we're just going to use them to perfume the turkey I have a, an orange that's quartered and I have two apples over here and I'll show you what we're going to do with those I have some butter and I just went outside in the garden I washed these off I've got some sage some thyme some rosemary and some bay leaf and they've been freshly cut and I just washed them so we're going to use those as well and it, it smells like Thanksgiving just coming inside from the garden having picked those it's fantastic so I'm going to set these aside and then uh, and I also have some butter if I didn't mention that I have a stick of butter okay so I'm going to show you from beginning to end because I know that there may be some of you out there who've never attempted to cook a turkey and it may feel like a daunting task this is not something to be afraid of a turkey is just a large chicken I'm um, not going to brine it um, brining would be done 24 hours in advance I'm just going to go with a basic roast on this bird today um, the other thing is never trust these don't ever trust these I pull them out they're ridiculous I like to wash my turkey very well my sink my sink is clean I have previously washed my sink I like to give the turkey a bath in cold water pull out the neck and place it in a pot that I have waiting off to the side where I have chopped up roughly chopped up about four stalks of celery including the leaves a handful of those baby carrots and an onion that I quartered I didn't even peel it and I am additionally going to throw a head of garlic in there here I'll just do that right now and we'll fill it with water and I'm also going to put some seasonings in here in just a little while this is going to simmer on top of the stove while your turkey is roasting um, I have a weird stove I have one back burner that the oven vents out of it gets hot enough that this will actually boil so I'm just going to set this on that burner and um, through the afternoon as the turkey is roasting this will actually make the stock that we're going to make our gravy from so I'm just going to put that over there and let's see there is this I think is the chicken heart or it's the giblets it's some part I'm going to throw that in there too and just put your hand in there clean it out real good make sure you get this side too this flap of skin and here you will find a packet of giblets and I'm going to throw that into our stock mixture as well some of you may choose not to eat these and that is perfectly acceptable um, my scissors aren't working as well as I want them to but well let's see I can just tear into that you want to eat these go right ahead they'll be nice to flavor the stock with yeah see there's a liver and a heart there the others was the giblets and I'm probably not going to put the liver in there because that'll give it a little bit of an acrid taste I'm going to set that aside though my dogs might like it all right let me throw this in the garbage can and let's take our clean turkey and we're going to move it off to the side here I'm going to bring it over so let me move this stuff out of the way all right the first thing I'm going to do take your chicken I mean your chicken your turkey wing and we're going to put it underneath its little bottom tuck it under this is going to make sure that they don't burn and it's going to give your turkey a nice even it's going to it's going to cook it more evenly because those aren't like flapping out there and this one is tough 
just tuck them under just like that so they're close to the body of the turkey. A lot of times the larger commercial turkeys will come with a, a plastic like a six pack handle with, around the legs of the turkey. This does not. This is actually prepared as I would do it. I would normally take my legs out of that plastic bit because I don't want to cook my turkey with the plastic. And I would, you see how they've kind of entrapped the legs of the turkey inside its own skin off of the thigh. Um, and that's how I would do it. And as it roasts, it's gonna get nice and tight there. So, let's see, let's begin. I have an apple here, and I'm going to poke this apple with a fork. Micah always thinks this is funny. It's not funny. This part here, this is where the turkey's neck was. If you s just put your apple up in there, and it's going to roast nicely. And it's going, by poking the holes in the apple, it's going to perfume the, uh, the turkey with that apple flavor. Now all you're going to do is you're going to take these aromatics that we chopped up earlier, the celery and the onion, and you're going to stuff it inside your bird the best that you can. <clears throat> and you may not use all of this, but I have just placed these out here. Um, this I probably prepared for a turkey. Here, let me turn that so you can more easily see. I'm, I said I'm used to uh, preparing a turkey that's much larger. Let's uh, put our garlic head in there. Probably only need the one. Onion. And you're going to not eat this anyway. Like I said, it's just going to perfume the turkey. It's going to be a wonderful flavor. And uh, it's going to be great. Let's see. And don't throw away... The celery leaves, please use them. There's no reason to throw them away. They have great flavor. And when you stick them inside the bird, they're going to get nice and soft, and they're going to really flavor up that bird nicely. All right. Now, <coughs> we've got our apple, our orange, celery, carrots, onions, garlic. And the only other thing that we need to do now is we're going to, we're going to go under here. If you put your finger right under the skin on the breast and loosen it right underneath from the skin and try not to tear it like I just did. It'll be fine. And on the larger birds this is easier. I, uh, to be quite honest with you, I've never cooked a small turkey in my life. I've only ever cooked these massive 22 to 24 pound birds. So, let's see. Uh, get your fingers in that butter and under the skin here. This one looks really bad. Is it? Just kind of squidge it in there. And don't use this stick of butter for anything else, please. Uh, if you don't use the whole thing, just toss it out because we don't want anybody getting any cooties from uh, the turkey e butter. Guys, I apologize for the lighting. If it's kind of hard to see, this is natural sunlight coming through this the window. Sunlight I can't is do bad. anything about that. Um, I can move it. Do you want me to move it? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Let me grab some more butter. And be liberal with the butter. The other thing I am going to tell you, I have my oven preheated to 450 degrees. We are not going to roast the turkey in its entirety at 450 degrees. We're going to roast it for 15 minutes at 450 degrees. We're going to set our timer, at which point we're going to turn it down to 350 degrees. And make sure you get these wings. Don't forget the wings with the butter. And get all parts of your turkey.
and press the butter inside the breast there so that it gets down to the places where you couldn't reach with your fingers. Okay, now let me rinse my hands off. Now for our the herbage. Now, seeing is how I have stuffed the cavity very well, I might add, with um, all those good aromatics. That's not going to come apart, so I'm going to attempt to shove some more in there. There's some time, and you know what? This doesn't have to be pretty. You just need to get it in there. Here's some rosemary. And I'm just kind of breaking it in half. Trust me, you will actually be able to smell it. It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna perfume the meat. It's going to flavor the meat. And I don't like these bits up on top. And sage. What is Thanksgiving without sage? Just shove it in there. And you're not going to present this bird hole. I never present the bird hole. I know that, you know, that's a very Norman Rockwell-esque thing to want to do because it's, it's exciting. But you know what? Carving at the table, I don't recommend at all. Now, this is just my little deal. I'm going to pick some of these sage leaves. And you'll see what I'm going to do with them. Okay, let me turn, turn it here. If you put them under the skin, like that. Now when you pull this out of the oven, the skin will have cooked and these will be visible and it's gonna be beautiful. And there's a very simple thing to do, but it's also very impressive because if you haven't ever done it before, people will think uh, you're the bee's knees. Just kind of flatten it out there. And if they get folded over, don't worry. This isn't rocket science. Food should not be frightening and it should not be intimidating. Food, we prepare food for sustenance and it is, in my opinion, one of the ultimate expressions of your love for your family. And what better time to keep it as simple as possible and not be afraid. If you've never cooked a turkey before, please do not be afraid of this. It's ridiculous to fear a turkey. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I know it sounds silly. I'm just going to pull this up for a second all these herbs that I have left I'm gonna stick underneath here and then I'm gonna put it down put the rack back on top and you can do that before you start I just didn't think to do it so I'm wiping up here then I'm gonna take about a cup of water or two depending I'm going to throw a third cup in there okay now the only thing left to do is salt and pepper our bird lots of pepper. 
You can put some poultry seasoning in here. I'm not going to do that today because we have all this great fresh herb. So it would be kind of redundant to do that. But if all you have is poultry seasoning, toss, you know, season liberally inside the cavity before you stuff it with all those good aromatics. And then sprinkle it on the outside along with the salt and pepper. Okay, again, my oven is at 450 degrees. We have our beginnings of our stock over here. They're going to start simmering away and smell delicious. Let's put this in here. If you have a very large turkey, you will need to remove one of the racks from your oven. And there it goes. And now I'm sweating. All right, in a half an hour, we are gonna come back and turn our oven to 350 degrees. And I will bring you in here when I do that, just to help you be reminded. So I'll be back in half an hour. Okay, our time is almost up, so I'm just gonna stop the timer. And let me explain to you why we have it at 450 for, for half an hour. I'm sorry. And I believe I told you 30 minutes. Look at how brown this skin is. Instead of that skin steaming, it, it's rendered some of its fat and it got all the juices flowing in that bird. And now we're going to turn the heat back to 350 degrees. And I'm going to roast this until the juices run clear in the thickest part of the meat. And I'll go ahead and I'll take the internal temperature with the meat thermometer. Anything over 160 is perfect. Then we're going to let the meat rest for a half an hour and then I'll show you how we carve it. So all we have to do now is sit and wait and go do something else. Like so I'll NASCAR. be back when this is ready. Like NASCAR. Oh, Rick says we're going to go watch NASCAR. But really, we're going to go put up our Christmas tree. Okay. I'll see you in a little okay. while. That turkey's been in the oven about an hour and 45 minutes. And I just wanted to show you, I never turned this burner on. I accidentally turned the front one on because I'm stupid that way. Um, and you can see that this stock is turning out to be actually beautiful. See, that's all you have to do. While your turkey's cooking, you can make turkey stock for gravy. All you've got in here is that turkey neck. And it's going to flavor and it's going to bring all of that good turkey flavor in there. And these vegetables are rendering all of their flavorful goodness. Just leave it there. Um, keep it on low all day long. It won't matter. I keep the lid on it. And the one other thing I am going to do is I'm going to pull this bird out for just a minute. Look at that. It is not cooked all the way through yet, so don't pick at it. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to give it a little baste. I did a little bit earlier go in there and throw some more water in the bottom of the pan. And don't be afraid to do that. Check it periodically and make sure that you've got enough water in the bottom of that pan. Do you want to look at the, the leaves? And you can see now those sage leaves are peeking through and that skin is beautiful and crispy. Oh, look at that. And I popped, uh, I, like I said, I popped for this organic bird. I normally have only ever purchased um, regular um, turkeys, and I've enjoyed them. Um, this year, because I was buying this small bird, I went ahead and bought this organic one and we're going to see how we like it. I figure wherever you can get something organic you should at least try. And what I'm going to do while I have you here is I'm going to find my meat thermometer and it's not in there. And I'm going to take its internal temperature right now just to see where we're at with that. Sissy, get down. You'll have to excuse her. And of course I can't, oh here it is. Right. I have a couple meat thermometers, but this is the one I really turn to. 
Uh, I have one that you can with a probe that you can put in there. Um, let's take its temperature. We're going to go all the way to the bone. We're going to see what that says. It is not done yet. It's probably going to top out around 120. Now remember, this looks done, it's not done. Okay? We're putting it back in the oven. It's still set at 350. It needs to still keep have its nice little warm nap for at least another hour. We'll come back in another hour and we'll check it again and we'll do its internal temperature and we'll see where we are then. So, until then, go have something fun to do. Okay, another hour has gone by and look at this bird and its beautiful mahogany skin. Look at that. Now, let's test the temperature here. Okay, this bird is done. Now we're going to tent it with aluminum foil and we're gonna let it sit for half an hour. Don't cut into it, just tent it with some foil. And I'll show you, just kind of cover him up. so that he can rest and all of his juices can get dispersed properly and they're not going to all come out when you get ready to carve this be a boy. All right.